I was making a lot of money during the COVID time. It was amazing. It was like gangbusters. Maybe just for a month, it was like getting $10,000. Wow. Yeah. You've just put yourself in a no money generating situation. You're, you're not working for the most part. I mean, you're, you're cheating on two cars on two row. You're making 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the terrible part about it. Cause there is no money in it. No. Uh, yeah. You are running the risk of if there is an accident on those cars, you're screwed. The value tanks get your ass back on the train, my friend. Yeah. Welcome to Finance Action. My name is Roman and together we'll dive into someone's personal finances, learning from their stories and taking action towards a financial future. Follow me along as we discover the story of Michael. Michael, how are you doing hey, today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. So let's look at your profile. You are 31 years old. You are from Seattle and currently lives in the city and you work as a full-time Turo entrepreneur. Nice, mate. Uh, looking at the way you've ranked your personal financial perspective on your personal finances from chilling to mayday, you've ranked yourself as yikes. That's right. So tell me a little bit more about why did you rank yourself as such? Um, the reason why I rank myself as yikes, I feel like right now that I have some systems in place, but I feel like I'm hemorrhaging money. So it feels like, yo, I'm running a ship. I have my first ship. It's steering this course right now, but there's a leak and I just don't know how to fix it. So that's why I'm here. It's like, hey, I'm looking to get closer to people who know this type of knowledge and get some advice and see what's up. Okay, awesome. So tell me, how did you put yourself in this situation? Just before COVID, um, me and my girlfriend were dating. And during this time, um, she has a son. Okay. I didn't tell my dad after a year. <laughs> wow. So okay. he kicked me out, right? He kicked <laughs> okay. me out of the house. And then I am now living in South Lake Union in Seattle. We found a good deal for an apartment for about 1300. We became property managers for about, and then the rent went down to 800. So wow, we're living around nice. South Lake Union. And so from there, I had this little beater car. I worked for Amazon for a little bit. And I was like, man, I think I wanna, I think I wanna pursue something. I'm just not sure what it is yet. So maybe during the winter time, my girlfriend takes us to go sledding. We used a Turo rental, right, to get a Durango because I had a Saab 9000, just a little front-wheel drive car that could probably blow up in the snow. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> That's right? right. So we got that, and then I come back, and it's like, man, I just rented this this dope Durango from, like, this Filipino woman, maybe an immigrant, and I'm thinking, like, hey, maybe if she can do it, maybe, why can't I do this too? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I got on to selling my car. I got my first, my first Jeep Renegade, a little Trailhawk, <laughs> right? I got that and rented, and I was like, whoa, this is it. I'm just going to work a little bit more and get some more cars and just do this. I was making a lot of money during the COVID time. And right now, I just feel like things have changed, but it's hard to get out of right now. Wow. Okay, cool. I mean, I'm extremely interested about the Turo business. I mean, as many of our audience and probably myself at the time during COVID, I mean, you would hear Turo here, Turo left and right. And it seemed to be like the side hustle to get into, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's true that there was a ton of demand at the time during COVID. I mean, you've you can just even expand on that. You were making pretty good at the time. Yeah. Um, so with some of my cars, I was making maybe like at minimum $130 a day for rental. And I could see some of them go up to 200. Wow. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was amazing. It was like gangbusters. Maybe just for a month, it was like getting a thousand, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Yeah. Woo. I mean, you were running six cars at the time. Yeah. It was uh, wild. I was like, yeah, I just want to chase my dreams real fast. I was like in high school, I had a bunch of Hondas. Right, I was switching cars all the time. My favorite anime at the time was called Initial D. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted all these cars, but now I'm just living the boyhood dream of getting all the cars I want as an adult and making money off of them. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna run this storyline for me. Okay, so living the two road dream, I guess, for a couple months, maybe a year during the COVID time, and now yeah. you are here. We just ended the first quarter of 2023. You've uh, gone down from six cars to three cars, That's and right. it is your full-time job right now. How much does that make? Let's move into our income and asset section. How much do you make on those cars right now? Well, I don't make as much money as I did back then during COVID time. It okay. was just basically booming for business at that time. But right now, I would say the earnings have been halved. Oof. If not even more so. January of this year, two cars. I was making. This is this is not net. This is probably this is gross. And yeah. I would probably say it's like two thousand, right? And those like slow season. Right now, I would say it's close to four thousand. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So all right. things change. Things are weird. Things are weird with her all the time. Things are moving. There is definitely seasonality, especially in Seattle. Yeah. Let's look at, you know, pre-tax. How much um, pre-tax should we average that? Maybe 3,000. Is that fair? For January and February, 2000, 2000. Yeah. March, 4,000. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I want to be conservative say- because I want to account for seasonality. There's going to be months. I'm sure that during the summer, you're going to strike yeah. really good. But during the winter, you're on a dip, man. Yeah. Well, that depends because my cars are all SUVs. And sometimes oh. I take care, I kind of like capitalize on that market. Okay. People come through Seattle. They want to explore the mountains. They want to go true. skiing, get an SUV. That's fair. So yeah. we'll ta- tackle into some of your uh, car payments later on on that front. I go. feel conservative and I want to make sure we are realistic and just assume about $3,000 months pre-tax. Sounds good Is to that me. fair? Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, yearly you are at $36,000. If we benchmark that against the category, so people in your age bracket from 25 to 34, the median in the U.S. is mm-hmm. $50,000. Yeah. I mean, thirty-six thousand dollars living in Seattle, and I don't know how. Oh man, how I you pulling that? Because post tax, you are at two thousand one hundred. Mm, yeah. I mean, assuming the yeah the cost of living in this town, but uh, you know, let's move on. I'm sure we'll be discussing later on some uh, additional income streams. But for now, you would say this is all you have. On yeah, that front. this is primarily what I'm doing right now. At the same time, I'm looking for a job. But how much time does Turo takes you on two cars? Um, not that much time at all. If anything, people are usually pre-book and I already have a system in place of okay. being fully passive. I would just unlock cars through my phone or okay. something like that. Yeah, they're just S- come by. So, okay. So you make 2,100 net per month doing pretty much everything passive. So wh- what else do you do during the day? Well, I'm applying for jobs. Uh, I, run, I, I do an Etsy store. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what I should be doing. Let's, uh, let's say that. Yeah. I'm figuring out what I should be doing, and I hope that someone gives me a chance to do something about it. <laughs> yeah. I see. So, so like, dang, Etsy I'm, store, but are you making any money on this? Not really. Like, I'm just saying, like, uh, what I'm doing with my time is just mainly um, applying for jobs. Uh, basically, all I know how to do is Turo. I wish I figured out something else. Other skills. Other skills to do something about it. On my other, on other time, I help coach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. And I help coach yoga, but this more is like a pa- passion project. I rather see. than just making any income right now. Have you been in the job market for a while? For a while, yeah. Maybe since November. So it's been six months in the job market? Yeah. What are you looking for? A CEO position? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I'm Not even. I am looking for like maybe associate, entry level, some positions like that. I also am looking like more forward into work from home positions so I can still okay. do my Turo operations. But at this point, right, I'm like applying for anything. My, my next... Thing that I hope that I can get is like this job with enterprise vehicles. Okay. So I can work in their management training program. Yeah. So when I get through that, then maybe I can buy cars at a discounted rate and continue on. But that's, yeah, that's what I'm like kind of hoping for. Anything that can help my Turo business, either with better deals or the time flexibility. So you've been chilling a little bit, huh? I'm, I've been, yeah, I've been chilling, like just doing my best with anything I can do. Health is wealth type of stuff, right? So yeah. I just stay healthy, st- get my mind right and not be mm. too upset about my situation. What's very interesting about your case, Michael, is you have a, a multi-layer. There are so many, so much things to <laughs> you that we'll dive into and we are hoping you're excited uh, to follow us along. That's funny, man. As always, you know, in this channel, a quick plug, we'd love to have you follow us along on many other stories and so feel free to subscribe as well. You would go on YouTube and you'd say, YouTube, success story, the best side of us all, let's go, you know, everybody get into the game and so on and then, you know, the, the, <laughs> the economy start to turn and... Uh, Interest rate on car went up, yeah. less vacation. People are more um, conscious about the way they spend money. They're you know less extravagant on their spend. And you also have the car rental companies that have backed up on their game. I mean, it's at the time, it's because there was probably a shortage of cars that you came into the market. Yeah. But now they are back into their game. Yeah, that's right. And so there's like a different, it's just a different like climate of risk taking on like getting into Turo. So... There is many ways to go about acquiring your cars, right? But a lot of these videos don't really tell you too much about the risks you have to take in terms of maybe depreciation, um, seasonality, and, and all these type of things, right? They'll say like, hey, we have a function here. Get on board with it. It makes a lot of money. Great. Now figure out your own risk yourself. And that's where I'm at. I had to do my, a lot of my own type of like understanding of what could go wrong in the, this type of situation. So, yeah. I'm feeling it right now for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's that's for sure. What's your um, booking rate, or I would say occupancy on your cars I, I per see. month? Like, 
what, how, many, how often do you book them? Again, depending on the seasons. So we're going to talk on the slow season, right? Maybe just half the month, maybe like 50%, 50%, 60%, right? When it's better, 80 to 90%. How much do you rent those cars? My cars are ranging from maybe $59 up to $89. So something around around there. Before, during COVID, so, it was 100 to maybe 180, 200 sometimes. It was great. So you're renting... A 2022 Jeep Wrangler, yeah, Rubicon for fifty nine dollars a day. Mm hmm. That's that's the terrible part about it because there is no money in it. No, uh, yeah. This is this is I made this type of this those type of decisions to commit to those vehicles, right? With the data that I had from a good year. And then so a BMW X3 2022, sixty dollars a day. Yeah. No, this is um, okay. We'll, we'll dive into the expenses associated with those cars, but uh, it's true at the first glance here there is. There is no money in that game, at least not in this time. Not for those types of cars. The no. luxury segment, I mean, at sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's <clears throat> discuss at some of your assets. So thank you for providing us with some of your accounts. Here I see you have a checking account with uh, four thousand one hundred and eighty-four dollars. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. I see a deposit last month of about four grand. What what was that? That was for my tax return. So okay. yeah, this is um, my tax okay. return from my job at the time and some returns back from uh, writing off some things off Turo. So yeah. Okay. Uh, I see other statements here on the brokerage account. You have 7,300. Mm -hmm. You probably have lost uh, quite a bit given the financial situation right now in the economy. Oh uh, yeah, just put in an index some TikTok advice I've been taking. Oh, no, no. All right, you know, just put it in some sort of index that grows over time, put in your Roth IRA. Well, that's good, though. Yeah, 401k yeah. is really good. Yeah. So 401k, Roth IRA, this is definitely a good recommendation. But yeah, if you yeah. decided to invest into, like, meme stock or, oh, meme like, stock. follow Wall Street bets or the Dang. Reddit post, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, been a, I've been a victim of that. <laughs> that you have? I have, man. It's like, whoa, this sounds so good to, to be true now. Wow, we're living in a moment. Let's let's put some money onto it. Did you sell it the good time? I'm a I'm a I lost a shameful amount of money. <laughs> really? I lost lost a shameful amount. So I, you're holding the bag right now. What's what, what's up? You're holding the bag. You're one I, of those I'm, that I'm, I'm gonna hold it right now. No, man, I got out, but I got out at a loss. Ugh. Shameful amount of money, loss on paper, loss. Which stock did you invest into? That was the big one. Oh man, it was like I during, mean from it was during, AMC. It was to during GameStop, AMC, Nokia time, man. That was some <laughs> wild dumb shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, the stock swings like this year they are incremental growth, but but then it's it's you have to be extremely timely but about that. We're living that. in history, bro. That's what they would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> right. no, but I mean, you know, some of those no financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I won't say anything about um, kind of recommendation on what to invest on stocks, but just being mindful. Yeah. Of following those trends, like the shit coins, you know. I mean, myself, I have to say, I was into the Dogecoin trend at some point. I yeah, exited uh, at an okay time, but we all get influenced by that. Just, just be mindful, okay? Think twice. Uh, generally, you end up holding the bag, and that's what we are saying: is holding the bag is when you know you go joining the train to the moon. You know, say to the moon. Oh, with wow. <laughs> When's the Lambo? <laughs> Where's the yacht? <laughs> yeah, people sell it dips. And who, who stays at the bottom, now that he's in a huge loss, it's the holders. Yep. And so, you know, we say uh, there is a term in uh, stock investing, H-O-D-L, uh, hold on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> hodl, just hodl but, down. Yeah, exactly, yep. hodl down. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be... Uh, you don't want to be in this position, so just just be very mindful about that. Okay, so you're still holding about seven thousand three hundred on this, yeah, uh, and you have a retirement account of eight thousand five hundred. Okay, mm. I mean let's let's figure out again as we move into your expenses what to do with those. <laughs> Generally, I, I really don't like to tap into brokerage account loss because you don't lose until you sell. This brings us to our. Um, next segmentation as we wrap up your assets here expenses. And debt. So let's look first at some of your expenses. Rent or mortgage. So in your case, you do you pay mortgage? Um, I pay into a home equity line of credit. So okay. yeah, we switched over the mortgage into a home equity line of credit, right? To save on the interest, save on the payments, right? So that can give us some more leeway to do other things with it. Okay. So very brief introduction on what it is. This is what we call a HELOC. 
H E L O C, Home Equity Line of Credit. And what it is is if you have equity in your home, you are able to take a portion of that equity and convert it toward a loan. Generally, uh, the difference between a HELOC and a home equity loan is that you are tapping into that money, not at once. You can tap over a duration of period. In that case, generally, it's about 10 years, right? You can tap into that money. Uh, and for the first 10 years, you're paying interest on the amount of money that you're borrowing, okay, at a variable interest rate. After the 10 years completion, you now have to pay principal back on that loan. And generally, that goes for an extra 20 years. Now, what's very challenging about ELOX is it's based on a variable interest. Okay, variable interest meaning it's it's fluctuating with the Federal Reserve. And right now, because we are in a very high interest period, high comparatively against the recent years, it's not that high, but right now it's high and we're feeling all of it. Your HELOC must be pretty expensive. What is your interest rate on this? Oh, uh, I believe my interest rate is 7.5%. You know what? I got it at around 4%. There you go. Yep. There you go. Pure definition of variable interest. And that's why I personally do not like variable interest rates. When we compare that against a home equity loan, which is generally you're taking that money instantly outside of your equity against your equity of your home, it's a fixed interest. Okay. And so uh, this in your case could have been potentially a, a better option at the time. Uh, because right now you end up paying 7.5%. Um, but again, you have those 10 years to put money in and out and in and out. And that's a little bit about your case as I look here into your statements. I see that you know, you're, you're taking $5,000 out and then you're bringing 1,000, 200, 2,000, 1,300. You're pretty much moving back and forth on this at all time. Yeah, that's right. But ultimately, you have a, a loan balance that's that's remaining at around 200 and 200, 200 and one thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. So for your case in this situation right now, uh, I'm going to use the HELOC as if you're paying a rent payment. Okay. You're renting. Okay. I mean that's kind of what you have. You're renting now. This this money that you have in equity here is is it your own house? It's on paper. is my It's my house, but I live with my parents here. So okay. they uh, did a quick claim on on the house during COVID time. They thought they were going to pass away or something wrong was going to happen. And wow. so I was like, hey, it's a good idea to put you on the name of this house because you have a higher survivability rate than we do. Okay. So, I mean, it's... I also learned something recently after I did that. It's like, whoa, you could get a lot better deals as a first-time home buyer. Yeah. Yeah. And then I missed out on that and I was like really upset. And I was like, wow, I, I, trust, I trust my parents this time to help me with this financial stuff, right? But they give me the wrong advice. And it's just like, I guess it's the knowledge been passed down yeah. to us, right? It's just not as available. Yeah, that's true. No, it's 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 always it's always good to to consult, um, meet with you know different potentially financial advisors or even uh, like people in knowledge to help you run through some of the best situations. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on now. Uh, now that we've identified your rent at a thousand five hundred or your ELOC, I want I I don't want to go back into this at this point. Uh, uh, and we'll discuss why later on. But right now, in my calculation, I identify it as a need, and it's uh, s similar to your rent. Moving on into transportation. I mean, this is where most of your expenses are from, right? You have... How many cars do you have right now? I have uh, three vehicles right now. Okay. Yeah. So you have three cars. You have the 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. How much are you paying for it? Uh, I believe around $780. And it is a. Did you take money on this? Did you did you buy it? Are you building? Did you buy equity or is it a lease? What uh, is it? Yeah, I have a lease on this. This is a personal lease. <coughs> it was supposed to be for my my uh, my fleet, uh, for Turo. So I make some money off of it. Yeah. Okay. So eight hundred dollars a car that's costing you eight hundred dollars, but it's bringing about sixty four sixty five thousand dollars a day on on Turo. Yeah. Okay, and then you have a BMW X three. That is costing you eight hundred dollars a month. Personal lease, same <coughs> purpose for that too. Okay, eight hundred dollars, and it's bringing you how much a day on average? On average, well, typical day, sixty nine to eighty nine dollars a day, depending yeah. on the season and everything. It's just like, man, I made these locked into these type of like leases, these commitments during a time when I was using data from last year. I was using data from a really good yeah. year. Now it's just getting normal again, and so I was like, great. Now I got some expensive cars. 
at some average prices. Yeah. yeah. And then you have a, a third car you mentioned. Yeah, that that's I'm not right. seeing here. What is it? That's right. So uh, this is my 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Okay. Basically, yep. Um, I own this Ford Bronco outright, and it makes me money. Okay, cool. So it's a 2021. How many miles does it has? Uh, 49,000, 48,000, something <coughs> like that. Okay. How much money do you think it's worth? From what the dealership gave me, maybe around 25,000. I could probably sell it on Facebook for 27, 28 if I just do my own wheeling and dealing. Okay, so you have a $27,000 car asset and the rest of your cars are leased, so you're not building any equity on it. You're just yeah. paying to own them and uh, use them for your Yeah, pay, pay for the use, man. It's like, man, it's great. <clears throat> I mean, the biggest thing with those, and this is why personally I didn't decide to get into the Turo business, Yeah, is because when you're paying cars that are a fortune like this, and if an accident arises then your Carfax yeah. is going to report an accident on it. Yeah, and the right. value of your car dips, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why, personally, when I was considering going into Turo, I didn't want to invest into very expensive cars. What was your thought behind going the luxury route? Let's say I got exposed to some material that would tell me that they were able to find these leases for a certain amount MSRP off, right? And it, it just felt like a, like a secret deal. And I got into no. it, right? Yeah. And it did give me, Secret. they did give me like maybe 90 to $120 off from the monthly. But getting to the luxury segment at this time, it, it's, it's not kicking it. It's, yeah. uh, it's like you're paying too much. Uh, people are not willing to pay that much anymore for cars at this time. I mean, just in car payments, not even assuming the Bronco, you're paying 800 plus 800, $1,600 on leases. Yeah, yeah. And you, you're generating, you know, be three grand a month. My understanding at the time, right, <laughs> was like, hey, I'd be probably paying that much, but I was imagining getting 150 a day for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. No, I hear you. I mean, right now the equation definitely doesn't work. You have to add as well insurance on top of that. How much is insurance per month? Insurance on uh, for the both of them is 300. So okay. total, yeah. Okay. And uh, and uh, just assuming your time, so you so so I want you to realize that right now you're not making a dime on those cars. No, no. You're not making a dime because they cost you 1600 plus you have insurance. So that's already 1900 and you make 2100 net on those per month. Mm -hmm. So you're making 200 bucks if so. Yeah. If so, that's assuming a good average. That's right. And it's costing you so much time. Mm -hmm. The like, equation mathematically does not make sense. You're just wasting your time. Yeah, it does not, man. I wish I can get out of it right now. Okay, we'll discuss about that. I think there is an exit. Um, moving on, do you have some student loans or no? Um, I have some student loans, so 4000 okay. federal. Um, Zero percent right now? Zero percent. Don't have to make a payment on it. Just hoping it gets canceled. <laughs> Just be conservative and always uh, make sure that you approach the problem that as if it does not happen. If it happens, bonus, jackpot, awesome. If it does not, you need to be ready for that. Yeah. Okay, moving on into some of your credit card expenses. Uh, so you don't only have the, uh, some uh, strong payments on your cars, but I also see quite a bit of credit card debt here. We are starting with the Chase. You have $2,200 worth of debt yeah. on this credit card, 21% interest. As I look into some of your payments, you are fairly frugal. I mean, you've spent quite a bit on... Uh, I mean, here I see an expenses for Uber Eats, sixty one dollars. Yeah, probably probably like some time after Valentine's Day, probably oh, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. So okay. two fifteen, maybe. Okay. Sorry, I was late for Valentine's Day. I'll make it up. That's <laughs> fine. Um, and then I see a ton of dog expenses here. Benfield, two seventy. Uh, Benfield again, sixty four. Yeah. Whoa. So pet insurance there. Have a dog. You know what? Okay. This dog has been great for us, for me especially, because oh, it yeah. gets my Parents out my <laughs> parents out my ass. This, my parents are always <laughs> in my business. Oh, I this see. This dog oh, really? here, yeah. So this dog is kind of like a some blessing. mental health here, yeah. mental health asset. <laughs> That's good. I have a, a little dog myself too, and they they give a great amount of joy. Uh, and I see here that you're paying for pet insurance. So I want to really dive into this subject uh, briefly. Yeah. My recommendation: get the damn pet insurance. Because uh, I can run you very briefly through a story with my uh, little experience here. A couple months ago, uh, my dog decided to eat a chew of uh, plastic that was outside. Uh, and we quickly grabbed it. He already had it in his stomach. $6,000 surgery. Damn, and at the time, I was like, 
Oh my, thank you so much that uh, we have paid insurance that's costing me $60 a month because for the most part, they covered almost most of it, yeah. you know, uh, especially if they are young. Generally, if they are young, you have better prices and then you, you keep uh, loyalty with those companies and they keep the same price over the length of the, of the you know, the age of the pet. So get pet insurance. Okay, moving on. I see here you have a little bit of expenses. La Parisienne. I mean, I'm French myself, but $20 <laughs> on croissant, what oh, is going yeah. on? So I got to go to a date, you know, got to oh. fancy, you know, the, 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 the language of romance, you know, I got to show, <laughs> show what's up. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, you know, you know what's up. Do you spend a lot of money on, on your dates? Um, not really. Uh, so, so actually the secret here, guys, is that <laughs> I'm, I'm on a food stamp EBT. <laughs> okay, okay. In, in Washington State, that there's a program called, I think it's also for Nationwide, it's called Museums for All. Oh, okay. Yeah, museums all. Great place to take your date. So you get free museum access if you have a food stamp. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, at least uh, that's a good uh, expense. It doesn't cost you much. And uh, it's always nice uh, to bring your date to a, a nice place, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so look at the, looking at this card, I'm not seeing a ton of expenses. You're just not paying it. I mean, uh, you're, you're spending as much as you're putting it back, right? You purchase for 830 you pay back 860 So no payments towards it. As uh, I mean, you don't have income right now. So yeah. or your income is... I'm it's not enough to, to cater to your life. I'm just trying to <coughs> make some magic going with the statement balance and before and accrue some sort of interest, you know, for <laughs> 30 days type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm mean, doing a lot of juggling for <coughs> sure. I mean, here I see you have another card, 3,500 on this one. This was um, my Barclays card. It was a great card. Zero uh, percent. I, I had a high interest rate on my one of my business cards and I stopped using it, but I wanted to transfer the debt okay. out for that. I wanted to consolidate. So I put in that. And so there it is. I paid a little bit of it, and now there's three thousand left on it. But yeah. when it was yeah. almost maxed out, it put my credit score down. Oof. Yeah, I was at eight hundred, and then it put oh. me down to maybe six ninety for maxing out that credit. It was a nine thousand wow. dollar credit card. But that's I want to take it out of my business, so I didn't have to pay that interest on it. Okay, so the the interest on it is twenty one percent, and you have three more months. Yeah, three months, man. Yep, three months until the hammer hits. Right now you're chilling on the on the free money, but you know, as much as I like that consolidation and zero percent cards, it gives you a little bit of time. Yes, so I'm not against it if you're really in a pickle, but you haven't made a payment on it, or I mean, not much since you've gotten this card. So you just let the card be and uh, not touch it, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to hope for more of a cushion on my cash side in order to make payments on that okay at, at least at least thank you you're not spending more money on this i don't no. see any charges so yeah okay you're not spending much on that okay i see another card again a thousand dollars the amount is uh not as big as the others 23 percent here in american express uh yeah that's that's gonna be my business okay yeah my you're business still trade. stacking on interest on that front yeah time. that's right you know you have 130 dollars for roof house Oh, that's going to be my uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym. So okay. for my mental health, yeah. my health sake, just practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's a great sport. Uh, I, I practiced martial arts myself for, uh, for a bit as well, uh, from karate, Jiu-Jitsu for a year and a half. George St. Pierre right here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweet. All right. So, man, you, um, you're in a tough spot. You've just put yourself in a no money generating situation. You're... <laughs> You're not working for the most part. I mean, you're, you're chilling on two cars on two row and uh, you're not making money on those. You're making 200 bucks. Yeah. And it's costing you time. It's costing you probably like you have to deal with insurance if something arises and you are running the risk of if there is an accident on those cars, you're screwed. The value tanks. I would, I would actually hope for something happens with oh, one really? of these cars. Yeah. Because I have gap insurance on the Jeep Wrangler and the BMW. <laughs> so if anyone gets into an accident... <laughs> I okay. think that would be a good we, play for me. We won't say that. <laughs> Mathematically, it might be interesting, but don't, don't put it out there. We don't put it out there. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I see here on your debt is you own $3,000 on real estate tax. Because I own my house outright and it's not in a mortgage, yeah. I would have to pay property taxes on this every year. And so they do this with two payments out of the year, right? And they just split in half. I already pay 3000 with American Express plum card mm -hmm. right which gives me like another 60 days to actually pay in cash and then that uh, this one's coming up soon oh so you already put three thousand on your on your mx uh i already paid it off too so oh you already did, paid did, it off. i did some juggling you okay. know what i mean i paid it with the amex i waited <clears> 60 <throat> days i take it money out the heloc paid off the card 
you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Then put money from my business into the heel. I have to pay that off. Yeah. You're just juggling. Doing it again. Yep. Okay. I mean, th at the end of the day, you're not making money. You're, you're just juggling money in and out and you're paying interest to the banks. That's Yeah, that's right. I'm just hoping in my juggling that I don't pay interest to the banks. I know there's some things that are going to happen, but I'm trying to minimalize the, you know, just put a Band-Aid on it right now and yeah. hopefully until something great happens. Yeah, so you have 3000 that is due in, you know, a couple of days right now. Yeah. All right. Now that I know a little bit more about your situation, Michael, it is time for the money case. Back for a money case segment of our show. And today we're going to do something a little bit different because of the situation that you've put yourself into, Michael. Mm. Um, in this case here, I have the amount of money that you're throwing every month being underwater on your payments. Okay. What I mean by that is as we identify your needs right now, the minimum amount of money that you need in your current situation, assuming we don't take any action, to provide for your basic needs, you are spending... $4,400 a month on needs. And that's because of your HELOC payment on interest and especially your payments on cars that are stacking to the roof. Mm. Your income per month, as we discussed, is $2,100 net. Yeah. This means that every month, Michael, you are $2,300 Underwater, you're losing two thousand. <laughs> it's no joke, though. Oh, two thousand three hundred dollars of money that's being lost because of some of the decisions and the position that you're building yourself into. Most of them are not even building equity. The ELOC, you're purely paying interest. The lease, you're not building any equity on those cars. Mm. So here, I want you to take that money. Okay. Go make a random club here. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to throw this in the garbage because this is what you're doing every month. Paying leases, paying interest on some of on, on some of your assets. Damn. Go ahead, mate. I'm gonna throw a stack of twenties. <laughs> this, this is two thousand dollars. This is two thousand bucks right here? Yeah. All right, all right. Two thousand three hundred dollars. Damn, this could have gone to the club, man. This is this is heartbreaking right here. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Nothing. Right? No. That's what you said? Nothing. Nothing. Damn. Nothing. Nothing. You're not making money of your of your investments right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. And we are back from the money case. And now we'll be looking at real recommendation for our friend Michael here. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is what I would do in your situation based on my knowledge and experience. Number one, I would pay that real estate tax of three thousand dollars using the four thousand dollars that you have on your checking account. Recommendation number two, get rid of those expensive cars. As we mentioned previously, you're not making a dime on those uh, Jeep Wrangler and BMW X3. I think you're, you're just wasting your time. You're not building equity on those because it's a lease. They do not provide you any type of return that is worth your, your time. Your time, your worries, uh, and some of the risk that you could incur if there was to have an accident or something that, you know, maybe doesn't uh, total your car, but... You have a, a huge hit on the bumper. Your car becomes marked as accident on Carfax. And then <laughs> where goes the value when you bring it back to the dealership? You may end up paying money on this. Mm -hmm. So there is a potentially options for you to get out on those. If you go back to the dealer and, uh, uh, you know, buy the Apple by um, buying right, th right there the, the car. Yeah, outright and purchase. Then yeah. yeah. And then sending it straight away, you, you're going to lose money. But... I'm really confident that you're going to lose less money doing this than yeah. continuing your operations like this. Yeah, thinking about, you know, maybe you got to lose a finger for this one, but I can understand why. Just to save the whole body. Yeah, you're sinking on, on those two cars right now. We don't even realizing it. The third recommendation that I have for you is you have equity on your Bronco. $27,000. This equity, personally, I would sell the car. And then you have two routes. Round number one, I would like to use some of that equity to pay for your credit card debt, where uh, especially the Sapphire here that's uh, charging you 20% interest per year, there are only very few investments that can beat those types of returns, except the ones that are very risky. So I want you in the short term to try and take care of that debt, especially the one that's costing you interest. Gotcha. So use some of the equity that you have in the Bronco to pay some of those immediate debts that have the highest interest rates. Okay. Mm -hmm. The remaining amount of money 
either you continue to go with the route of Turo, and in that case, I recommend that you invest into budget cars, okay? I've studied the Turo game for a while myself. I've never really went into it, but you may be interested in buying cars that range from six to eight, maybe maximum $9,000. Those cars are going to rent for, what, $30, $35 a day, maybe, okay? With generally high, occup high occupancy rates because they are more affordable, mm. uh, and you want cars that are reliable, they're not going to cost you much on maintenance and that you know at any time if something arises, you can resell without losing too much money on those. Yeah. Some of the brands, again, I'm not an expert, a Turo expert. This is from my passion as a car person. For some of the, the cars that tend to be fairly budget-friendly, good maintenance, availability on part is strong and fairly simple to work on. You have samples that Toyota Yaris, Mitsubishi Mirage, Suzuki SX4, Mazda Mazda 2. Very simple cars, for the most part, at least on the statistics to do pretty good on Turo. That's if you want to go the Turo game. Gotcha. And I'm just like thinking like, I, this is this is me without the calculations here. Do I really want to drive a Yaris? I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. You should drive a freaking bicycle. I mean, no, no joke. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you should drive a dumb yeah, when yeah. you're losing two grand a month. Mm -hmm. You're probably, in terms of income, the person that I've met so far in our multiple interaction on this show that has the toughest needs to income situation. Yeah. You're losing twice as much as you're making. Mm -hmm. You're spending 44, you're earning 22. Mm -hmm. I understand it may be a hit for your you know, personal oh, self, yeah, yeah, yeah. but get out of this, get oh. out of those damn cars that don't create a damn income to you, my friend. For sure. My recommendation overall for you is to increase your damn income. Get your ass back on the train, my friend. Yeah. And if it's without Turo, where you're okay with not going the Turo route, at least for a while, mm -hmm. but otherwise you have to somehow find a way to get into a position where you can generate further income. All right. Because without any income, little by little, you're going to put yourself in a greater hole that is going to be more and more difficult ultimately to get out of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So income generation is going to be your number one priority here overall. And ultimately, potentially, I think you have an exit here if you leverage your assets pretty well. Mm. What are your thoughts, Michael, as uh, we wrap up some of our discussions here? I think I'm going to consider like getting rid of those cars for sure. Because you know what? Like Again, I had better projections, better hopes and dreams for these cars. And right now, I'm just committed I'm locked into them. I need to get out of them somehow. I need to figure that out. Second, need a job for sure. I'm trying my best. I'm doing doing everything I can, and I'm going to do some then some even more. And I bought this Ford Bronco. It sounds very smart. I think I'm going to reconsider selling it. I'm going to consider selling it and consider these cars that you mentioned. A little cheaper, right? Reliable. Yeah. Seeing that I can have a more of a fleet with it, and I capitalize on a different market. Instead of luxury, instead of this, like, sports SUV type of stuff, I'm going to get onto that Econo. 100%. Okay, uh, Michael, a lot of complexity into your situation. I'm really hoping that we've tried to uh, bring it a little bit here together, at least on those three pillars of recommendations that you need to tackle into um, based on your assets and your situation. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, man. It's, I really appreciate the help. I, I don't really get too much fi financial exposure in my daily life with anything, maybe just TikTok. But in my friend group, my parents, anything like that, right? It's hard. We don't really talk about this type of stuff. It's really nice to have help. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for joining us on today's Finance Action. We hope you've gained some knowledge as we learn into the story of such a popular trend of Turo uh, and, uh, and see that the situation is not uh, always as green uh, as uh, we may have expected. Michael, it was a pleasure to have you. We are excited to see you again for the next episode. And so see you next time. A bientôt.